Um, but I've, I've changed shirts, so. Uh, awesome, we're live. Okay, uh, so last time you and I talked, we, um, we played uh, with financial modeling for one space, which is, uh, it's interesting because I'm, I'm choosing language very carefully. Um, it is something that we are in the early stages of manifesting. Um, so the, the difference in that choice of language being that like, you know, if we're doing the typical startup route, it's like, yeah, we're like, we are doing this thing and we're raising money to do a, a to have a space. And then that space is going to be filled with this. And like, you know, later this year we'll be doing right. So there's like timelines and there's expectations and so on and so forth. Um, and one space is very much just let's, let's play with it and let's see who wants to play with us. And if at some point, you know, we find out that nobody wants to play with us, then we'll find something else to play with, right? You know, it's kid, kids, kids lose interest in one thing, they go elsewhere. Or if it's like that thing that's like, no, 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 let's all play with the story. Great. Um, so we did that we did for like 90 minutes. Uh, we created a financial model that um, I've been sharing with people that are of my non of my similar non financial caliber. Um, and I'm like, yeah, and then at the end of like an hour and a half, he's like, so you'd need $800,000 and you'd be wildly profitable from month three. <laughs> and then I, I handed it to john and john was like, you know, who'd be interested in this and, and I won't say the name but you know who he works with and he's like, you know, I mean, it's, it's real estate, like it's space for people, it's community, it's like like three different points of interest. Um, so what I posed to John was for us to be able to, to play with the idea of a, um, of like a one sheet, right? Cause that's his language for pitching concepts. Um, and so, you know, the next question is like, what does one space look like as a one sheet? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be one space, you know, the whole kind of purpose of it is that one ink is a co-op that's incubating think we're, we're co-creating together and so whether it's one space or show one the tesla talk show you know whatever um once we figure out the storytelling process it would probably be you know everything would probably be loosely based on that in the future um so my question for you today because we both kind of uh prompted to dig more into co-ops um and uh, how, how they function. And the place that I got was, I think I understand a little bit more about the governance structure. Um, the thing that I'm questioning is like, how long is it gonna take for us to functionally and perhaps legally restructure in a way similar to this, presuming that we know that this to be the right thing to do so that we can get started or um, how do we communicate a flexible system of contribution that people can touch now? Um, which is more in line with John's agreement with Spiritual Bro. And so it's like, can we create a shared agreement that functionally says, we don't know what we're agreeing to, but we're agreeing to figure it out? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the those are my favorite agreements. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and by the way, like I don't know much about co-ops still. I didn't spend Same. Uh, you know any time on it, so um, so hopefully I can get educated from what you learn and then take it from there. Yeah. So I mean, there's different pieces to it. Um, it's largely uh, I have so after reading a sense of humanity. Not after I'm stuck. Got like an hour left. Um, in reading a sense of humanity. Uh, I've been seeing the downfalls of rigid systems of government governance. And some of the stuff that I found in co-ops, um, so co-op types, like there's general co-ops, ag agricultural co-ops, artisan co-ops, business co-ops, childcare, financial, food, housing, right? So there's all these different kinds of co-ops. And One Inc, you know, kind of has components of all these and therefore fits inside the general category. Um, in the general category, it's like, okay, well, uh, do, do, do they actually have documents here? So like basic, respon basic responsibilities of board of directors, uh, essential business planning elements, feasibility study, 
all that jazz, operations, conflict resolution tips, guidelines for successful uh, organizational meetings, right? So seemingly basic, seemingly basic. Um, really the magic is in like basic responsibilities, tips, yeah. It's mostly, I believe, wait, this one I think was the one that was the most potent. Yeah, so clarify shared needs and expectations and the potential of a cooperative business model. So that was like, I mean like, oh cool, yeah, that makes sense. And then you're like, all right, cool, spend a year doing that. Um, <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, so shared needs, um, I think the thing that I keep, that I found for me that John has communicated that I find in conversations with other people is like, okay, um, you know, I, I am, cannot yet pay my rent with spiritual capital. Uh, so, so then it's like, all right, how do, how do we create a space where people can transition from old governance to, to, well, older governance, I would say. So old governance being our current system uh, and older governance being the system that was in place before that was in place. Uh, and so, uh, identify and communicate uh, who might contribute, select steering committee, draft basic purpose statement, hold meetings, prepare business plan, draft bylaws. Um, so I think a lot of this, a lot of the, I would say a lot of steps one through four have been worked on. Um, this part, I think we're approaching. Mm -hmm. um, and then here, the question is, can we, before we do this, and before we get to this, can we start with this? Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, change this. Sorry, I'm reading it over and over again. Yeah. Thank you. What's the shared need that you think is um, the purpose of the co-op, right? Yeah, I... Hmm. Is that to accelerate the... I mean live live in resonance maybe um, it's it's I find that a lot of I, I hover between macroscopic and microscopic so the the macroscopic is like living in resonance and then the microscopic is like if we create value then we will generate value um, or we will we will attract value uh, you know, you can you can look at the same thing from very different levels. The error would be to look at the thing from the microscopic level and say this is how it needs to be done, and then presume that the macroscopic level is different. Um, and and it's a lot more energy to explain how not to do it to the camera. This is how each part of the microscopic aspect works, and then like that's how we're going to do it. Or you just look from the macroscopic level and say, all right, this is this is the structure. Everything else should fit that. Right. Hey, did you know your video is not on? Just no. Oh yeah, your video is not on. Uh, your, screen your screen is, but you, I just got a picture of you. Um, just so you know. Uh, um, there it goes. But um, but uh, to me, I would have said it's to accelerate um, the growth of human consciousness. Yes. Um, now the way we do that is, uh, you know different the way we're doing that is creating this co-op no uh yes well and the same so that's john's language is to accelerate humanity's transition to a higher stage of consciousness mm -hmm. um one of the ways i say that is to elevate the human frequency same intention uh mm -hmm. live in resonance i just came up with that same intention um okay. so you know it's like 
yeah, it's all it's all the same intention. It's the language that changes, um, and I feel like the language changes depending on the person. Um, but so part of it is like, all right, we look at principles because I did some work on those. I did some play on those. <laughs> Uh, man, this uh, streaming thing really just slows down the internet because it goes like instantaneously when I'm not streaming. Got to get me some of that fiber. All right, so values and principles, I added in Nick's notations and my responses to them. Um, voluntary and open membership democratic member control, member economic participation. So um, if I am a member of the One Inc. Co-op, then I should be incentivized to uh, participate by hiring you versus hiring someone who's not in the co-op. Um, and that can be done through uh, member refunds, that kind of thing. Uh, voluntary and open membership, anyone, anyone is welcome. Um, do, do, do. Autonomy, independence, and self-reliance. Uh, no one should be incentivized to join the co-op to be serviced. So I think the difference between that is like Nick, for example. Nick's like, I agree with this. Um, I I I like what you're doing. I want to participate. So then Nick just jumps in. Nick didn't wait for how exactly am I going to benefit from this in the long run in order to like to answer that question versus other people who I've seen meet with John, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then they just kind of sit there and they're like, what next? And they're like, yeah, if you, if you pay me, I'll be interested. That is not, um, that is not, where was I? That is not autonomy, independence, and self-reliance. Um, and so having people come in, in as best a manner that they can self-support, uh, and then encouraging everyone to participate between one, one another, providing education, training, and information. Um, I got an email from someone today that they said selling information, and I was just like, oof. I was like, that's, I, I haven't heard that phrase in a while, and I don't like it, because like, no. That's me cringe. Um, and the ROI doesn't make any sense. Yeah, participation. You're better off you, getting it for free. Well, you, and you, you commit more energy to protecting it than you do to protecting it and selling it than you do to creating it and offering it and just providing value. So like, but it, but you, it's very difficult to see that when you're inside that system. So I, I understand it because I used to be in that system. Um, participation, cooperation, communal effort, uh, concern for community. Uh, da, 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 da. What is the community? The, the community is or? yeah is the members. Um, Members, yeah, focusing on members' needs, cooperatives work for the sustainable development of their communities through policies accepted by their members. Nick said, I think there's a lot of mileage to get out of ex uh, expanding on sustainable. Uh, sustainable means you can keep doing this. Um, do, 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 do. I've added a link to sustainable so we can augment. So uh, sustainable, I mean, mythos is built as a living system and like nature is a living system. Um, I was thinking of cars the other day because I saw a car you could like see the gas tank exposed. And I was like, well, a car carries with it all of its fuel that it burns, right? Just as our bodies carry with it fuel that it burns. But the difference being, or the difference that I thought of, was that a car cannot operate independently. It needs to be serviced, right? Like, like other entities need to feed the car and care for the car. The car does not do anything on its own. Versus our bodies, like naturally, will search for food if we are hungry. Like they, they, they do what they can to find it. Um, and so you create these living systems where the entity, in some way, self sustains, self governs, so on and so forth. Right. So you, it, I'm not paraphrasing this as well as it is in a sense of humanity, but yeah. It's. It seems like it should be self. Uh, it should be sustainable. Right. And what I mean by that is like, what if it like, or it should have a plan to get the sustainability. So mm -hmm. like, whatever the at risk um, element to sustainability, whether it be cash, right? Whether it be, um, you know, location or something like whatever. 
whatever it is, it should be working to make itself more sustainable all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I stole this from Burning Man, appropriated this from Burning Man, but leave no trace. And, and the way that Burning Man sees that is like, we go into the space, we have our event, we leave, and it, it's as if we were never there. Um, but if you pull from the set of humanity, uh, they, there's an idea that was expressed that's like, if you manufacture and sell a t-shirt, then the sustainability is typically calculated on like, how is it, is it, is it hemp? Like, is it a renewable resource that it's made from? Is it done with natural dyes and that kind of thing? <clears throat> there's a model that he put forth, uh, which is that uh, you measure the life of the product. So if I manufacture a shirt, what is the cost of manufacturing that shirt? Um, and how long is that shirt going to exist in the world? Uh, and like, what is its life cycle? And so if I'm buying it, I'm buying into that life cycle, uh, which means that you have to offset the entire life cycle, not just the manufacturing process. And um, I haven't conveyed it here yet, but I like that notion of like, okay, cool, if we're creating something that is just going to sit and deteriorate over time. And, you know, then that, and again, these are all semantic things that we can hone over time. But these were kind of like the loose principles and values that I created. And it's basically this conversation that helps to refine them over time, add new ones, um, and all that jazz. So the, the biggest question I think I have for you is like, thoughts on doing this. <laughs> before we do this. Because we're already operating. I mean, that's, that's the difference with what we're doing is that like this conversation right now, whether or not someone's watching it in the present moment, um, is operations because we, the, the operation is telling the story and we're figuring out what the story is and figuring out what the story is is part of the story. Yep. Um, uh, and to me, I don't know if I consider, uh, so I don't know how operations happens without a plan. Um, and by that, all I mean is like, what are you, what are you working towards and how do you know when you're there? Right. Or how do you know when mm -hmm. it's time to move on to the next thing? Or what is the feedback loop that allows you to know if you're getting closer or further away from the goal? So, uh, to me, I would I would essentially do. Um, uh, I think it's fine. I think it's 100% fine to begin operating before you have all the legal concepts. Like you can go back and fix that, right? Mm. In general. And frankly, the more sus and, and I'm using sustainable in a different approach, right? To ensure success, I would argue that you should be operating before all this other stuff is buttoned up. Yeah. Um, right, because the threat of it not working the longer you wait to operate the more uh likely it would be that you're not going to you know get to the goal or not uh um get to the point where you are actually sustainable or whatever whatever uh, language you want to use around that but um, yeah to me it's like yeah at what point does it make sense to knock out all those other steps right um which would be part of the plan so all i think you, we should do is like identify what the actual plan is um, and then and then set up that process of okay we're working towards that plan this is what we're doing and this is the result of it and now here's what we're going to do next right um, I think um, that does, as a line like it could align you know the members towards the common goal of getting this thing up and running right I, I think for, for me two things came up and that was self-reliance and sustainability so there's certain citizens of one already who some are like interested and listening um, I was talking to someone today she's she's a former journalist um, super like really great at storytelling um, and she's you know using her language escaping um, from her current job uh, and she's like I want to do this and I was like are you open to doing that in a way uh, that does what you want it to do and isn't what you said you wanted. And she's like, absolutely. 
Uh, and I'm like, how, uh, how present are you in manifesting that? She goes, fully, however, I still need to make a living and you know, pay for stuff. So my energy is dispersed in that sense. And that connected for me with a thing that I, I was actually in the process of finding, um, but it was basically that believing that you need to do one thing to, to fix it in order to make the space is, is false. Um, uh, and I'm not conveying it as beautifully as it was, but... Uh, I think it's the biggest problem towards uh, people um, living in resonance as mm. language. Anyway. Uh, it's the biggest hurdle that I come across. The failure, the failure of technolo the technological fix, the failure of the program to bring all the world under control, we address it by intensifying the effort to control, sacrificing more and more of life to war. Um, so it's like you we're in this we're in this predicament because we sought control and now we believe that we get out of it by more control and that doesn't make sense um, so uh, self-reliance and sustainability I mean at present one ink is I mean I'm making space for people through symposium. Um, I'm, and now the people that are in that space are making space for themselves. Uh, I functionally, I create, I clicked the buttons to create the citizens of one Slack group. And now like m people are sharing things that are happening. Like, people are connecting, people are synergizing, people are working together. Again, not of my doing. All I did was click the buttons to make the space. And so um, this notion of making space for people has been prominent on my mind. And so I, I think the One Inc. Slack group, the Citizens of One, is part of that space. One space later down the road will be a part of that space. Um, making it so that people can be more present by, I mean, it's, it's, more energy to have John be fully present in as a member of, of One Inc. because of how he is attached to the old system. Versus it's less energy if we just like map it from a financial standpoint to have me present in the system. So then, okay, is, because I'm cheaper. Um, like, <laughs> call, call it what it is. Um, and then like you have other people that like like Nick for example like Nick you know has he has the time and the time is financially cheaper um, but we don't have the other resources to yet to to make use of that time and that kind of gets back to the notion of um, different forms of capital so yeah I don't know where I was going with that um, no that was uh, that was great, and this is like this is this is my number one subject, right? Because I, I I believe that I'm cheaper, right? Like, oh, my hurdle is less. Everybody has a hurdle, whether mm -hmm. it be whether it be five hundred grand a month or two grand a month. It doesn't matter. Everybody has this made up hurdle in their head that uh, prevents them from from yeah uh you know vibrating at a higher frequency resonant whatever it might be yeah. doing what they want right um and I'm, I'm just fascinated by that and now like even even like the energy it would take to get john's full-time attention right yeah like you, you you started playing with that and and i don't know if it's any different than yours mm. yeah or mine. yeah or, or um what's her name i'm sorry that you, you mentioned before the the, the storyteller um okay you know, I, I don't see it as any different. Um, it, it's all so uh, then. So then, what is it that gets people? I mean, John. I, I just urge people to get hyper practical with their own situation. Right. Like, um, like for John, whatever that number might be, or you, whatever that number might be. Let's get hyper practical of how we're going to get there. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't able to be hyper practical. I was able to pretend that I was hyper practical until John 
made space for me financially. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, all those numbers that I thought that this would be, this is not that. And, and, and now that I see it, it's like, you know, you wake up, you're like, how did I ever delude myself into believing that just in the same way that, you know, I mean, I would imagine residents of North Korea might see life, you know, right? Like you can't, you can't be what you can't see. So I think that's, that's part of it. Um, I, I almost believe One Inc.'s purpose is to get people over this hurdle. But that could be me. Like, that could be my perception I mean, of it's re returning humanity I, to an original psychology of abundance at a higher order of complexity. That falls within it. <laughs> cool. I love it. Yeah. We all hear something different, too, like when we talk about this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and it's funny because Spiritual Bro um, helps to correct it. I actually uh, offered some perspective and a shift for someone privately in, uh, in Citizens One earlier because they were, they were saying I a lot. Like they were saying, I see this and I, I believe this and I. And I was like, you know, to say I creates a wall between you and everybody else presuming that we don't all have that perspective, right? Um, and I was looking for it in uh, a sense of humanity, but it's like, if you stop seeing, I think I, is it on the Inc. website? I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, it's not that we shouldn't be selfish, it's that we misperceive the self. When the other is not an other, then to be good to an other is to be good to yourself. So, I mean, it, fun games. yeah, and in that, in, in this conversation, I was like, hey, like, based on the, like, I know we're having a casual conversation, mm -hmm. the semantics of your language are suggesting that we are not one, and here's how I see that, and I just want to remind you, like, I'm here for you, I have space for you, I, I believe in this, I, see, I, hear, I hear what you're intending to say, and mm -hmm. I agree, um, I'm giving you the reflection that, like, the way that I'm receiving it is not that and after a few minutes of chatting he's like oh okay and and it takes some time i mean like what i've found is that you when you make space for people to shift like you you really just say like i hear what you're saying i hear your intention i totally agree with you like let's just use different language um and it he over the course of time has been shifting and learning and that's fantastic um but i think that we the practice is making space for people and we all we all must do it yeah. Uh, so, as far as like contribution, I mean, I created a spreadsheet with John's contributions. I can add in like um, the unpaid contribute. Well, there's a few things. So one is like John's contributions were contributions to me, to to me through an a made up entity, which is like the Spiritual Bro Partnership. And then we recently agreed that that partnership will in some form evolve into one ink. Okay, so let's say that John's contributions to Spiritual Bro are now considered John's contributions to one ink, and those contributions to one ink paid the first, air quotes, board member, which is me. And then because it paid me, I spent three months doing stuff and things, and now we're here. Um, Similarly-ish, um, my developer Grant, uh, I paid him to build Mythos One, and then he went way overboard with dev. Um, and so there's a lot of money, in my perspective, there's money that hasn't been paid to him, but he's been super, 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 super patient um, because A, he just like wanted to keep building and B, he believes in what we're doing. So then Grant's contribution, not financial capital, but natural capital, time, um, is also marked in this ledger. And one of the things that I thought was like, let's create like a contribution form and it's like what are you contributing what type of capital um and then you say like okay what's the nature of this capital like is this capital for any specific purpose and then you kind of like select the project that it's going to and then you're like you know do you uh, some question in regards to like financial position um in terms of like how how meaningful is that contribution but at the same time um i john went on a five minute kind of like expression of anxiety about uh, about a, an amount of money and after his five minute expression I was like John you just conveyed this anxiety 
with the same intensity that I was about to convey my anxiety about the same thing with two less zeros. <laughs> and we just both like sat there for a minute. We're like, oh, like the anxiety feels the same regardless of the number. So then, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing to measure types of capital because it's like, how do you measure spiritual capital? Like you, you kind of shouldn't. Um, so, it's, and one, the goal of measuring all the capital is what? Uh, to, to, sh to, to create like a sharing process of upside? Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of times when I explain this to someone who is not deep within it, blockchain comes up because it's like, this is what blockchain is for. Yeah, but blockchain is really good with financial capital, not so much with other things. Um, and, you know, a co-op model is, is similar in that regard, right? It's like you put in your money, you shop inside our system with your money, and you get money back, um, or you get services back. So I feel like the co-op model adds in natural capital a little bit better, um, but it still misses these three. And so I would say that measuring capital is like, okay, if you, Jeff, put in $50,000 into One Inc., what do you want in return for that $50,000? Do you want a financial return a year from now? Do you want a service return a month from now? Do, you know, like, so that process, because I feel like it's going to be different for everyone. John put in money to Spiritual Bro because he wanted a financial return later. And he was flexible on when that financial return was happening, but he knew specifically what he wanted and what he wanted it for. Um, versus I wanted to be, we'll call it spiritual capital, I wanted to be present in manifesting this. And that exchange, John, John put in financial capital to give me spiritual capital so that my spiritual capital could return financial capital. So like, it, when we create a loose system for that, then it feels like that unlocks the contributions of say like, okay, cool, Jeff, like, you know, what do you want to put in and what do you want to get out? Or anyone else who's contributing. Right, I, um, which is, it's, it's very, um, that's a tough one to crack and I can see how complicated it is, right? Whereas I was thinking, like, I, that's funny. Um, it, in, my, in my head, like, we all should, we all are working <laughs> towards a common goal. I know I'm screwing up. The I know, I, I really appreciate the fact that you're self-correcting. Um, that makes me, makes me happy. I look at the, the community as a way to have people play non-zero sum games together. So mm -hmm. I, if I choose to help, if I'm aligned with somebody else's mission and I have capital and they do not, we should be able to create something together. But a portion, 50%, uh, should go to the community for even having the chance for that happening. And everyone in the community agrees that we should all be marching towards this overall mission as the highest priority above any financial reward, above anything else um, that we may get personally. But how do you create that win-win, um, lose-lose, right, <laughs> mentality? Yeah. Well, um, I think that, I mean, two, two things there is, one is that that, that presumes that it's gonna be a one-to-one -one transfer, um, a transaction. One-to-one one -to -one is what I meant, sorry. Right. Well, like and- Like a standard capital, like, like a standard, cap table situation where where half of it's gifted to you know wanting uh, that's what I was imagining yeah Sorry. um no 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 it, it, it's because it needs like a bear it needs like a, a box you know what do you mean by that um it can't it can be a, uh, the rules can't be abstract okay and the rules is not the right language yeah, the Prin principles? Upside, the shares, the, yeah, the principles, the how we operate, you know, how we all operate inside the co-op, right? They, they can't be um, abstract, in mm -hmm. my opinion. 
because the the <laughs> sorry <laughs> the the goal of us all uh, like a company is uh, a collection of people working towards a common goal. The goal for the human being should be a, you know get as many people aligned towards common goals as possible because everybody will share the outside. It's interesting that you say goals because I feel like principles doesn't achieve that. Um, principles is a shared set of agreements for how we live. It doesn't necessarily like aim. At, I I mean, returning humanity to an original psychology of, of abundance at a higher order of complexity is. I mean, uh, I I'm thinking of a sentence that I won't try and repeat because I can't get it as it is, but that statement combines with something else of like generating spiritual capital. Actually, I know where I put it. Um, maybe it was necessary that our quest take us to the very extremes of separation. Perhaps the reunion that is to follow will not be a return to a pristine past, but rather a, but a reunion on a higher level of consciousness, a sprawling or uh, spiraling and not circling. So I took from a sense of humanity, returning humanity to an original psychology of abundance at a higher order of complexity. John independently came up with the language uh, accelerating humanity's transition to the next stage of uh, consciousness. And then a sense of humanity later in the book, which neither of us had read to that point um, when these came up, uh, is uh, this notion of the reunion, which is the, um, Returning, returning humanity to an original psychology of abundance, that is the definition of the age of reunion posed by, the, by Eisenstein in the book. And he's saying that like, maybe uh, this is a uh, reunion on a higher level of consciousness, which is what John said independently, so it's like, same, same. And so if that's, if that's the goal, then the question's, you know, someone's suggesting, hey, let's create an e-commerce store. Well, how does the e-commerce store reunite us? Well, Spiritual Gangster is a really great way of selling t-shirts, and the t-shirts allow people to self-label themselves based on how they feel within, but when they label themselves based on how they feel within, and they express it outwardly, it's also saying to all the people who are perceiving it, I am this and you are not, because you are not wearing the shirt. And so Spiritual Bros store is being constructed um, based on shirts that make outward expressions, uh, that, that provide benefit to the people who perceive them, not to the person who is wearing it. So then if we start creating these rule, not rules, if we start creating these, um, these structures. frameworks, framework structures, you know, uh, to say, uh, does this bring benefit to, to all, right? Like, uh, and if it does not, how can we make sure that all benefit? Uh, so this shirt, for example, is printed through a service which is like a drop ship kind of thing and you know they, they make money, so that's all hunky-dory. I don't think that these are made sustainably and it definitely requires a lot of labor through a select group of individuals. So then is there a way that we can sidestep that in a reasonable manner? Is that something that we you know, are attentive to and do later, you know, so, so looking at the whole life cycle. Um, yeah. Um, and I, the more that I think about it, the more that I think that it's this notion of boards, like you have a group of people, because there's no, there, there doesn't seem to be any clear answer because in nature, it's like, why is this doing that? Well, 10 answers are true. Um, well, you know, and like, so then if we're talking about, okay, Jeff and Brian are both citizens of one, and Jeff and Brian are doing a thing together, how do we, where can we facilitate that is kind of like one question. Um, helping to structure the relationship, um, helping to align the project, like so that's where like a board would come in and so a board would be independent of you or I and say like oh that's cool that you guys are doing this um, you know how are the members going to benefit how are we going to help the world benefit uh, do you need anything um, you know and and that conversation so maybe like a list of questions to ask 
Yeah, that that I mean that's good. Um, I mean, the board would be the decider in that case, or at, um, allocating resources or helping in whatever ways, right, or that they see fit. I don't know if it would be a decider. I think it's more of like a like a guru, right? Like the guru provides wisdom, but it's up to you to ad adapt and implement. Mm -hmm. as, as my yoga teacher says, we're all here to do our work. Um, what do you, uh, bringing it down to, down to a lower level, um, or not a lower level, a more microscopic level. Uh, what, what would you say is your, the, the direction of your skin encapsulated ego? So I like, believe, um, I'm working, uh, on a process, really a process, a platform mm -hmm. that would allow, that would enable, um, entrepreneurs to build the businesses that they want as long as they are aligned. It'll support entrepreneurs building businesses as long as they are aligned to helping, um, helping its customers as much as the business owners themselves. So that's where I call like it only operates in non zero sum games. So I believe that as you as you build out those that portfolio, mm -hmm. the portfolio is controlled, right? And I'm using it in quotes because I don't really mean right. um, controlled, right? Um, but it's governed by right a set of principles that if you vi if any if any aspect of those uh, companies violate any of those principles, um, it um, basically detaches, right, and deploys <laughs> its resources, whatever. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm fixing. Like no, 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 you're 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 painting a, a a picture for me, which I'm gonna put a pin in. Um, what is the? I'm gonna put a pin in it for a second. I'm gonna ask this question. What is the? What is the tangible? What does success look like in that regard? Um, success is on a spectrum for me. Mm -hmm. uh, me, like my, my ego. Um, I, I believe I've already achieved right the lowest level of success, right, which is freedom, opportunity. You know, all the things that we desire for ourselves, like being able to control my own time, right? Like there's right. a whole lot of things there. Um, Self reliance. The outside, like I believe, I believe I can. Uh, I believe I can. I believe this process will enable more and more human beings to operate on a higher frequency, right? So I believe, like, the, um, let's assume, let's just assume that I'm right on everything, which I have not been and I don't intend to be. Um, I've already, uh, you know, proven X amount that I believe um, can be used to benefit others. Okay. And, long as I make that process sustainable, make mm -hmm. that process like which is all structures are unstable, right? Yeah. So like <laughs> as allow uh, allow that process to become sustainable. Thank you. Um, um, it will only allow it will only allow for more humans to share and the benefit. Okay. So here's what came up for me as you explain that. Okay. On Reddit, mm -hmm. it is theoretically a democratic platform. Um, so let's do Top Talent. So Top Talent is a subreddit for really amazing talent and people. Um, do to do, do requires far and above uh, talent and skill. No editing. No, not safe for work stuff, must have descriptive titles, yada, yada. So what happens, the way that Reddit's algorithm works is that when you submit something, um, you go to new, anything that's submitted comes into, I mean, it comes into the feed. And what we're just looking at is hot. So that's stuff that's like been voted on for a bit. But you see these, none of this has any, any votes. And 37 minutes ago, an hour ago, so on and so forth. So the way that Reddit's algorithm works is that anything, any votes or comments that happen within the first 25 minutes of the post 
are, are worth more in their algorithm. Um, so if like the first three votes are down, then like pretty much no one besides those three people will see it uh, because it'll just go away. It'll kind of like immediately be filtered out as like, no, that was not meant to exist here. Um, so my thought is, is that if, y if, if you, if we were to build a system where I'm thinking of like an Airtable submission form where it's like, what, what is your, give me one sentence of what your business idea is and give me one sentence about how there's, you know, mutual benefit. And then it's a post like this and then you have people vote on it to say like, yes, that is of mutual benefit. No, that is not of mutual benefit. If someone says no, then it pops up a little additional form, which is like, tell us how. Like where where does this have issues? How how can this person correct it? And those those options are based on the principles that we can outline. Now now you've just turned your system into a game, and that game is something that we can play together, and we can tell the story about it. So like you know oh hey this person this person has submitted their idea that they are working on, and they've they've submitted it so as to request community support. So if we say that it's not looking as though it's of mutual benefit, then it's a problem with their story, um, or it's, it's, a, it's not you know, congruent with what, the, what we're doing. So um, mm -hmm. functionally, at a microscopic level, like I can have our user experience designer create a version of, of Reddit just as an image um, with those questions, or we can actually build it with Airtable. That's actually not too terribly difficult to do. And then we can start sending it to people saying, you know, here's, here's the new forecast tool. Um, you know, it's a community for validating mutual interest or mutual benefit. Uh, and then we, we begin to tell that story. So in the same way that we're on this call now, um, you know, determining how to tell this story and we're, you know, learning how to tell the story in public. So if that's your next step, my, the place where I see bringing value to you so as to bring, so that we collectively can bring value to One Inc. is to facilitate that storytelling. Mm -hmm. And then the question is like, you know, back to, back to the financial types, when someone likes, like you comes in and says, I am self-reliant, that is the thing that I've been working on for this many years, here is my next step, how, how can we do this at right? It's a conversation. And then in that conversation, I suggest a potential pathway. And you say, I like that pathway. Let's play with that pathway. And I say, great. Then, then what happens next? And a sense of humanity talks about how, like, you know, just gift, right? Like, gift without expectation um, is, is also, like, the Burning Man thing. Uh, I think it's this one. Um, so it's basically saying, oh, this is interesting. Uh, the Jesuit explorers said, uh, I told them, uh, people like this are never constrained by can I afford to. They always have an open hand and an open heart, and somehow it seems they're always provided for. Recently, I met a shaman, an artist, who does not charge for his services. His whole house is furnished with gifts from students and friends. Even without waiting for a restorative con economy to appear, we can implement uh, in our own lives simply by opening up to the gift economy and the gift ecology that replaces the money economy. And I was like, ooh, right? But that, that all that requires, and, and it's a lot, is straight up belief. Mm-hmm. I have a sticky note somewhere that's like, don't do drugs harder than you, <laughs> and belief is a drug. <laughs> belief is a drug, love is a drug, motorcycles are a drug, and drugs are drugs, but don't do drugs harder than you. Mm. Um, so yeah, so I'm like, I guess the, the, where, my, where I'm at is like, I see, I see you, and I, I hear that, and I see a way that I can provide value to that manifesting and then I see this, and the question is like, here to here. And it's like, where it's like, yes, 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 yes. That's all we're talking about. Mm -hmm. 
would actually be interesting as like a, and a like, do do you agree that benefit should be provided mutually? And then you like kind of like do it's like a this many steps until your account is completed, but but you do it as agreements. Mm hmm. Mm. Kind of I kind of like that a lot. <laughs> and then you could you could do it on the downside too, like. Um, uh, you could protect, you p could protect people from downside. Um, sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I think there's a way where one ink can just support people for free without any expectation, and then eventually they return that expectation, like they return based on whatever value they see fit. That uh, the person in control. Nick said that he's like. Um, we could do scholarships, and the purpose of the scholarship is for you to become self-reliant. I, I love that. To me, that's like that's the same process that you would you would submit your story that says, I mean, it could be it could be I'm an insurance agent that's trying to make sure people right like, and I'm, that's like a terrible example. But at the end of the day, like, um, whatever whatever their story is, if it's if it's viable. Right, mm -hmm. uh, become self-reliant and mutually beneficial. If, like, if it checks all the boxes, it's worth some investment, yeah. whether it be time, whether it be marketing, <coughs> whether it be what, whatever whatever asset could be. But if it met, meets all the criteria, it it is worth an investment. And if the potential uh, payback payback the ROI uh, is um, if the ROI is potentially higher, mm -hmm. it deserves more investment therefore creating more resources to help more, right? Yeah. yeah. When I, I think that having these conversations creates the answer because th I, for me this got a lot clearer when I had you as an example. Because like I, I know that we have resonance on the highest level and I know that we have resonance on the lowest level. I kind of, I, I'm, I'm reacting to my use of the word lowest, but um, mm -hmm. And, and then it's a question of like, how do, how do we get from here to there? And so once I had this example of like, okay, I, that painted a picture in my head and I could see how that happens and I could see where I could provide value to that process, um, it became clear, like we got to hear. And then the question is like, okay, like how do you want to do that? Um, so I think the more situations we have like that, um, and I keep getting back to this uh, thing that my dominatrix friend used, um, which is that someone asked her to be collared. So I, I honestly don't fully understand what that means, but it involves a collar. It's like a, I think it's like a right, like, like she becomes responsible for this person's like well-being. Like she tells them what to do. So it's kind of like he's like I want you to do this regularly which means that she basically has someone she's constantly caring for so it is like very much a responsibility to her and she gets paid for it but it's still a responsibility that she's accepting and so her question to him was like what do you expect to get from this I was like ah it's such a great question because a lot of times people say like I want to do a thing and saying cool thank you I'm into that what do you expect to get from this like tell me paint that picture for me um, I think asking people the question of like, hey, you're into One Inc., you, you want to be a member of the One Inc. co-op, what do you hope to gain from this? Um, or not hope, that's a bad phrasing, but uh, you know, what's, what's your intention and what's your expectation? And then um, having people go through that process, which we were doing the, like, the One Inc. immigration form, kind of in that same way, um, and for me, the complete, the profile completion thing for like the agreement com uh, completion thing like you you come in and you uh, align to these agreements and so if you say I disagree with this and it's like cool let's have a conversation about that and and then over time we hone that process we make it better um, we shorten it we find you know we find out where the holes are um, and or we turn people away uh, and say like we are not ready to help you um, or we are not ready to pull you from the system you know it's like in the matrix they only pulled out Neo they didn't pull out everybody all at once um, so so I guess the 
above the principles and above the values is this kind of short, short, shorter term agreement. Um, we agree to openly communicate about what we perceive as needs and support each other in being more attuned to the reality of those needs um, and facilitating the truth of those needs. I liked all that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I always, I always end up. I, um, the theory of what we just talked about to me uh, pushed me so much further down the line of of how I think it could work long term. Mm -hmm. Like just the to the concept of a Reddit type system where people are submitting that what they currently are doing, and then it either gets supported by the community yeah. or not. Yeah. Right. Um, like that blew me away. What I always end up is like, okay, if that's the the if that's like step three of five, mm -hmm. right? What's step two? And step two, like for me, mm -hmm. uh, or the platform or whatever it is, is how can I facilitate more of those discussions of what? Here's what reality is. Here's what you need. Like, like here's how we think you need to be helped, right? right? Like the assessment machine. And then once you know what needs to be helped, then you then you go back to the community is like, anybody help with this? Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, and uh, and that's, I keep going. No, 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 sorry, go ahead. Um, that's how I've been using Mythos in a way. Mm -hmm. So um, I just love this because it's absurd uh, in all the best ways. So I have Brian bot, and then I also came up with the idea to have flirty Brian bot. And then after the idea for flirty Brian bot, realized that like, wait a second, I should have a bunch of friends over and then live stream me training flirty, flirty Brian bot. You know, like, you know, so you know how like charades, like everybody throws in like a situation. Basically it would be that, but with AI. And, and, I, and, and everybody that I've told about this unanimous like unanimous I want in like I not a single person I have told about this doesn't want to attend this dinner so now I'm at the point where I'm like I'm gonna transport my entire desk right like my two big screens like my webcam all that jazz to to where we do symposium set it all up get some like you know get some food and then do like a, an ad on reddit to say hey on this day we're doing a live stream you know augmented romance thing so like come come and use your best trolling powers um, and like let's collectively train and then put the camera up top and be like what should we say to this you know like oh was that someone here who put that one in and and so all of that is like this idea but all of that is distilled down to these two sentences um, Brian Bot will be hosting a dinner party and live streaming the conversation as we train and co-create flirty Brian Bot, practice a play with augmented romance if you're keen to join text. That was it. And so I sent this to a few people. It's like, hey, would you want to be into this? And they like asked a question. I clarified the language. They asked a question. I cleared the five language. Everybody said yes. I don't have a date. I don't have a place. I haven't done any work. Like, mm -hmm. no, I haven't bought any ads. I haven't done any design. Like, all I did was type two sentences. And so it, it from this like this is your process to explain and tell stories and communicate. And these things. these are the stories, right? So right. so and and there's plenty of these that I haven't brought up in a while because they just didn't hit. And so that's where I think that the living system of One Inc is really supported by the living system of Mythos because it's honestly I find it very difficult to convey something of low resonance through Mythos because you augment it and low resonance tends to mean shallow and shallow doesn't get augmented and if you're not augmenting then it kind of it just like highlights how shallow it is it's really interesting um that's part of the reason why i had some some disagreements with former clients um because the, i was like well like as i started mapping them or do like telling their story with mythos uh it became very obvious to me and everybody who was reading it that like they were full of shit so, so I was like, uh, that's a challenge. Um, kind of, it's more of a, an accidental benefit. But uh, anyway, so that, when you talked about like, um, what's step two, for me, this is step two. Uh, 
And, and until, until this clicks, and actually a great example, um, have you read this one? No, no. Um, I'm, just, uh, I'm just giggling about uh, all of our structures of our brains and how we solve problems. Like, that's, it, that's how it was modeled. It's based amazing. on how you're, yeah. Super amazing. You know, like, I'm like, oh, what's the goal? How are you going to get there? Are you actually doing how you said you're going to get there or not? Right? Like, and where is your plan wrong? Is, yeah. You know, is your way of measuring wrong? Like, you know what I mean? Like, as you work towards the goal, uh, you know, goal in business, whatever it might be, you have a way of like, well, what am I doing? How do I explain that? Like, is that truly what I'm doing? Right? right? <laughs> like, you have a way to, to proof the, um, the needle. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, right? Yeah. Which and is, I'm just fascinated by the process. Uh, and that's, I mean, I would love to say that, like, it was my grand plan, but really it was, like, just 10 years of frustrations, and I wound up here. Um, and uh, so this one, I, I think I might have showed you this before, but, like, I I wanted a Tesla. I couldn't afford a Tesla. I thought it would be funny to get a company to pay for my Tesla and bring value to them in exchange for that money, and thus the obvious solution is to have a talk show and a Tesla. Um, and so I wrote these three paragraphs and I just like, you know, I would tell someone about the idea verbally, they'd be like, oh, so it's kind of like, you know, comedians in cars. And I'm like, yes. And, and someone else is like, so it's kind of like Joe Rogan where they talk about, you know, psychedelics and stuff like that. I'm like, yes. And then I added in this, I don't think anyone actually made that connection because it's not as popular, but, um, so I wrote these three paragraphs to explain the concept and I started sharing it with people before anything below existed. And everybody's like, that's amazing. That'll be so cool. I'm into it. I was like, okay, cool. So this is the thing that people are into and would watch. I didn't get like a list of 5,000 people that wanted to watch it. I just got like a, I mean, by and large, all of the people that I shared it with were into it. And sometimes I share ideas where people are not into it. Um, and I accept those perspectives and say, cool, let me adapt the concept or like, why do you feel that way? Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and then, you know, these three paragraphs manifested John lending me his uh, his Tesla, which then created actual, and it's on the back of a sticky note, but um, this this is the memory card with the pilot episodes. Uh, you know, <laughs> great storage. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and now we have, like you, if you go on my Facebook, you can see me sitting in a Tesla with another person and us talking. So now it feels more real. So then can we use what we have here to show a company this is what your money will do and is that enough or do we need to keep recording you know episodes and so it's i guess starting with the story as a model mm -hmm. um let's go with that that seems simple uh so i think telling telling the stories um is step two, back to what you were saying. The step one for me, I think, is this uh, question system, right? So it's like, cool, if you're in Citizens of One, what do you, what do you want to manifest? What do you, what, you know, what do you feel called to manifest? Uh, where are you questioning the capabilities with which you have to do that? Um, how is this of mutual benefit? those kinds of things. And then we have a format where no matter what's discussed, we collectively have these conversations in a similar way and we format the question process and the conversation process along the way. Um, mm -hmm. And then it, it feels like that conversation leads to agreement, agreement leads to principles and principles guide values. Mm -hmm. um, and then that that process would seem to paint a clear structure for the co-op, which is like presence. Mm -hmm. And I, the I, 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 I love that process. I almost want I want you to take me through it. Um, you know, I, I, I see it. More, I see it a lot more now. Um, I love this format, uh, and and you you being present in it on a regular basis. Uh, I have my re recurring with Jeff. Like, 
Um, so many stickies. Uh, and then the other thing that you, uh, a, a different thing that you threw to me was um, Reddit does not like self-promotion. Mm-hmm. But if we, it's actually, I think it's open source, or there's versions of it that are open source. Um, but if we literally clone Reddit, and instead of having subreddits, we have like co creativity opportunities. And then instead of rules, we have principles. <laughs> mm-hmm. And instead of comments, we have like ask questions. Um, and then all of the things that you and John and I and this whole group of people are discussing on a regular basis becomes this like, um, actually, it, this is now, so you see my wall behind me, Let me so I can point mm-hmm. correctly. Um, I was talking to John about this. So this is, this is two dimensions. Uh, up is, so the height on the wall is the frequency of the idea. And then the distance is present and future. Um, and so I, with Nick, I had a thought of making this three-dimensional. And so if I wanted to put a sticky on the wall, so let's say I have, I have an idea, and I think that we should do this thing. So I write it, I write it on this, and then I go to put it on the wall. The question is, where does it go? And so if this idea is then, let's say there's a thousand people that have access to this spread of nodes, and I have this node, and I put it out there, then it goes out to 10 people in that group, and they say, and, and they read it, and they either ask a question and say like, you know, what do you mean by that, or you know, give me some clarity, um, or they understand it, and they say, based on what I'm doing, right, based on the nodes that I have put up here, that I'm touching, that I know of, right, based on what I know and my perspective of the universe, I think this fits there. And then someone else goes, I think this fits there. And then someone else goes, I think this fits there. And you basically have them connect. I think that this is higher resonance than that. And I think that this should happen later than this. And then you have 10 people do the same thing with different perspectives. And you essentially democratically place a node in that sequence. Mm -hmm. And that has been how I've, that's the technological version, but that's also how I've been thinking of all the things that you and John and and everyone in One Inc. has been discussing of like, oh my god, I love this. It's a question of, do I love it now? Or <laughs> it, do I love it like, yes, that's a thing, you know. It, John and I is like, let's create a currency for consciousness and call it consense. It's like, yes, love the idea of that, but we're not jumping to do it tomorrow because it doesn't make sense tomorrow. <laughs> it makes sense like two years from now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, boy, that just the, just that concept of uh, bubbling things up based on a set of principles, which would then create um, a uh, would create order to our attention. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it's it's, it's it, that that this this conversation has uh, has been awesome. Um, yeah, I'm getting a lot clearer about this, this, uh, group of questions to ask, which I, <laughs> because, I mean, it, uh, you should, you, uh, I would urge you to write them and I would love to read them and give my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, because not only that, like you write the questions and then you put little pieces into it. Like I will put the forecast and answer them from that perspective. Right? <laughs> and then I'll answer it from, from the co-op's perspective itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, hey, Jeff here is speaking from the perspective of, uh, yeah. that's beautiful. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm I'm curious. 
No, I think I think it's it's just the questions. I mean, because that's the curiosity. I was like, you know, I'm curious of like how how this might happen, but it's um, it's the questions of what do you perceive as your needs? Where you know, like the I, I said it before. I'm not going to attempt to reframe it. It's always shittier the second time. Um, I put a marker in the stream, so I'll go back and look through them. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll write those out and we can workshop them um, and, and mull them over. Uh, I had, there was a quote that I found that it was like, oh, I don't know where it is. Creation, breath work, showing on, making space. Still, the, I'm super stoked on this. Um, that one? Uh, it was a really wise quote that was basically saying, "I won't trust your I won't trust your perspective. I won't trust your perspective until you step away and come back to me." Um, because you have to be able to to make space and process, which is also kind of like Daniel Kahneman's. Nothing is nothing is as important as you think it is when you're thinking about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, I haven't written it down yet. Anyway, um, amazing, uh, and, and as I say amazing, it is one hour and 11 minutes. Um, yay, yay 11s. Uh, actually, comically, did I, I don't know if I showed you this, but in the, when I created this, Speaking of 11, I just thought that was really fun. <laughs> Citizens of one, if you want to make a contribution, it's 11, one, 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 <laughs> These suggested amounts. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, and the other thing too is like, actually I'm, I'm reminding this, is uh, a potlatch society is a community uh, where status comes from uh, how much one contributes, not how much one owns. Um, as One Inc. starts to get press on the projects that we're doing, you know, uh, Spiritual Bro and stuff like that, like that we're, we're getting closer and closer to having a lot of, um, I mean, right now, John, John stands the most to gain because, you know, people are going to be like, who, who is what? You know, and like, I mean, it's designed constructive ambiguity, like growth hacking, whatever you want to call it, it's designed to make people ask questions and dig deeper. And right now, a lot of those questions are answered by who is John. Um, and so it's like John was saying, he's like, if nothing else, I think I just paid for like the best PR campaign ever. Uh, and, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting. It's all story. Yeah. Uh, well, sweetness, that was productive play because we had no purpose to be productive. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, it worked out well. Um, all right, I'm going to end the stream.